This is Dave with the Crafted Channel. I want to do some projects this winter. I live in Ohio. And I have this garage door that lets my garage be very, very cold. So I want to uh, insulate that. I purchased some uh, rigid foam insulation with uh, aluminum foil on one side and plastic on the other. And I'm experimenting with how I can get it in here. One problem I have is there's a lip. Foil needs to go above this, below this, and under this beam here. Here's the only place where it's easy to slip in. So I'm doing a couple of experimental pieces to see how I can piece this in here. And I have to end up with a structure that isn't going to fall off when the garage door's up. Uh, and something I'm not going to be maintenancing all the time. I've got a few problems like the screws um, going through here, but I can run those out and run them back in and they'll thread back into the foam. Um, I plan on, I bought a roll of batted insulation and I plan on stripping that into thin layers and filling up this with fiberglass and have it kind of pressing and holding the panel out against these lips. But the panel has to be a couple of pieces uh, in order to fit it in there. So I'm experimenting with what the best shape is. Uh, I, I tried cutting a piece diagonal and in my imagination I thought that if I could flex it like so that I could get it in here and open it up and perhaps get it up under there. But that wasn't correct. Seemed like a good idea. So I think I'm going to have to do a couple of pieces it's probably going to be two horizontal stripes. I'll work that out. And, um, when I, and, and I may, it's okay if I have to put like a strap across here, um, you know, some kind of thin aluminum strap or something to help hold it all together. I just want to do it in such a way that I don't have to mess with it again. So uh, if I have a nice warm garage this winter or a warmer garage, then I'll be warm. And perhaps this winter I'll actually do some projects instead of dreaming of doing projects. So there you go. I'll come back when I've got a panel in and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So here's the first panel started. I took some uh, insulation, peeled off a layer of it. And I put this piece of foam in. And I've run these screws in and out, although this one I still need to press the foam into it a little bit. You can see I've got this force from the insulation urging my panel out. good and this will also fill the, fill the air gap in there. I like a lot of light. Um, you may notice I've got the uh, this, this silver shinery part facing inside. Um, in the summer when I'm working I have this up um, and so this will help reflect light and make it brighter in here and yes it may reflect heat and possibly lead to the garage being warmer in the summer but that's not a very big deal when you've got a you know, a two-car wide opening, you've got plenty of circulation, you can run a fan and such. And this garage door doesn't really get an appreciable amount of sun on it. I'm mostly interested in, um, you know, a nice clean look, nice reflectivity, something I'm not going to have to service again. So that's why I chose to uh, put it this way. Technically, since the garage door is aluminum, it's already got a shiny surface under the anodizing facing outward. So I already have a, uh, a uh, radiant uh, reflecting material there. Sometimes I wonder when people stack up multiple layers of uh, shiny aluminum what they think they're doing. Um, for instance, um, you know, I'm into Airstreams, they'll put reflectix insulation, which is bubble wrap with shiny aluminum on it, inside of a uh, camper, and they think they're getting the full insulation value of that, and it is a very good insulation value, but they think they're getting the full insulation value of that, well, they've got it double layers of uh, radiant reflective barrier doesn't really make any sense you only need one um, but that's still a good product too and that wouldn't be it wouldn't have been a bad way to insulate this door but I, just, I wanted to do it with foam panels um, so there's the beginning of it let me finish this and we'll uh, come back cut a strip six inches the actual uh, distance I need to cover was five and a half you always want to just kind of lightly compress fiberglass insulation a little bit when you're working with it. I don't mean compress it to thickness, but inside the dimensions of uh, what you're holding it to. 
So that will stay pushed out of these things. So now this gap here is all, I would say, in almost an inch and a half, probably an inch and a half solid. And in order to get these in here, I got to overlap the foam. Well, I can push that foam back into the, uh, the fiberglass. So using a foam that's less than half the thickness of this gap uh, will help me to do this project. push the foam and ball it up there. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. I may have to do this in more than two pieces. There's a little bit of, this is like a geometry lesson here for me. I could have bought a kit. I think he's going to have to make a cut. could have bought a garage door kit. That would have cost me about $40 a side, so about 80 bucks. But I didn't like how they were put together. It looked like something that was going to be falling apart over time. Um, it was a soft, batted insulation with a plastic uh, skin on it. There we go. And they had these pads that you glued in or peel and stick it easy. And then a pin would stick out and you would put a washer over it if it would grab the pin. That's what held the batted insulation. It would probably go up really quick. But I got a feeling when the sun was on the door and it warmed up, those pads would be letting loose. And it would just be one of those projects where you regretted not going ahead and doing it all the way right. Oh, let's see. I'm going to be able to fit that together. How much overlap? Oh, man. What have I... What have I missed? Looks like I'm going to have to trim some off of this. Chinese finger puzzle. Yeah, I think I've got, I think my piece is just too large. Let me make a quick trim here. Okay. When I get this figured out, all I have to do is repeat this uh, 23 more times. And it looked like I knew what I was doing. Okay. Let's see. I only need a thin piece of sheet metal to do this. Oh, look, here we go, here we go. There we go, that's what I'm trying to do. I need something to pull down on that. Bought some aluminum tape. I wonder how it's going to hide that seam. I also use that as a handle. Pull down on this. in there. Ah, now how do I pull that back? Hmm. 
know, it feels like I don't have a complete idea here yet. Maybe I need to take these bolts out, install it, put the bolts in. You've got to be careful here. I don't want to take uh, too many. These hinges are all adjusted too, so I may have to probably just close my door and loosen and tighten these once. I'll solve that problem. And we get it all done. See, I can see where I can get a tool in to hold the foam out while I run the screws back. Another idea, dangerous one, is you can use some uh, spray foam insulation, a little dab of it back there, which would grow and push this out. But the problem with that, the problem with that growing and pushing this out is it might push this aluminum out and make quite a mess. Now I can reach up here and push that foam forward. Yeah, that's going to work perfect. I think the more the foam is out flush with this surface, the better look, the better my workmanship will look here. Now you might wonder, I'm doing this with a ratchet. I think I'm going to run to the lumber yard get a driver for my electric drill. Make this go a lot more quickly. Okay, that's pretty good. Not done yet. So we're getting there. Apply some uh, aluminum tape now. Okay, let me show you another tricky little thing I did. This was pushed back too far. There's nothing to stop it from going in. And I couldn't pull it out. I tried blowing air back there. You know, there's just no way to grip it and pull it out. So my insulation was squeezed down here. And I want this all to be out against these flanges as much as possible. It'll look better. So I put some aluminum tabs behind it. Aluminum, just aluminum tape. Um, and that allowed me to pull it out and adjust it. So now, now I think my Death Star may be complete. Um, that's out good enough now. I can put some, I'm going to put a strip of aluminum tape down here, a strip down this angle um, to dress it up. And I believe I'm going to pull this hinge off so the tape's under the hinge. Well, we're moving right along here. Give a little shout out to Alan Hobbs. He's got a workshop. And I've been talking to him about organizing his workshop. Well, my workshop could use a little organization too. And that's kind of what this project's about. I can keep working out here if I make it a little more comfy this winter. Using the insulation to hold the, uh, the board out is working perfectly. Been having some very good success here. Sure, if I'd have bought a kit, I'd have spent maybe ten dollars more in a quarter of the time. But you know what? I like doing it myself. And I feel like I have a much better quality job because I've got a nice, firm, hard surface here. Not something that uh, is going to be relying on sticky pads to hold up. Alan's moving, but I can see he doesn't have any insulation in his workshop, and neither does bluegrass bushcraft. Yeah, I notice these things. What happens this winter when it gets too cold to work in the shed? Okay, got my uh, driver. A lot better than turning the racket. What do I do if 
one tape. There you go. This tape was about $11. I'm probably going to have to go get another roll of it before I finish this job. Because my workshop's not completely organized, I can't really find the other roll of this that I have, although I may be remembering some I purchased for work. If I don't get this finished today, maybe I'll bring that home. And of course, I, I, since I have uh, you know, this cavity in here, I have to make two pieces that overlap. But I don't think I'm going to need any straps or anything down across them. They're uh, really quite self-supporting. All on their own. When I get done, I think it'll look like I knew what I was doing. Really, I didn't. I just experimented until I found a good system for doing it. Undoing these hinges so that I can uh, get some tape under it. I hope I don't have a problem with this tape falling off in the future. I don't think it's really necessary to hold it all together. Ooh, that was a mistake. Um, I've done this a couple of times. I don't think it's necessary to hold it all together, but it sure does make give it a finished look. And um, also, on at least this edge, it would let any uh, stop any air infiltration from coming in. Let's see. Using one of my cheesy Chinese knives here, cut this aluminum tape. There's a purpose for knives of not great quality. Although this one's been pretty decent. So before I take the hinges off, I uh, make sure I have two adjacent pieces in. It's really pretty simple should be able to finish this project today if I don't get too nappy. I'm really looking forward to it. This is something, I don't know, we've lived in this house seven or eight years and it's something I've always wanted to do. I just decided uh, today was going to be the day I was going to do that. I've always had a lot of nice tools, but I've never had an organized, roomy workshop. I've gotten close a couple of times, but life gets in the way, and responsibilities, and honeydews, and all that stuff. And you end up not, not doing the things you want to do for yourself. So, this is something I want to do for me. So I can enjoy some of my hobbies. Enjoy some of the things I like to do this winter. Oops. Help with the hinges over there. I think my roll of uh, insulation is probably going to finish the job. Turn the uh, torque down on this. And these are self threading screws. I don't want to thread a second set of uh, threads in here and strip this plate out. This was originally threaded by the man that installed the door. So I run them in a few turns by hand to make sure I'm using the original thread and not cutting any new ones. So there's some of the progress I've made. I've got, uh, let's see, 16 panels to do. I've got four, five, six of them done. 
we're moving on.